Hello guys, welcome back. In this lecture, we will develop a new Rails application for our course project that we already discussed about that what we are building here. So we are building, I'm repeating again, that we are building a developers community project here. Okay, so let's start quickly for creating a Rails application. So first you need to go to the terminal and switch into your preferred work directory. So I'm switching into the projects. Okay, and after switching into your preferred work directory, you need to run the command to generate a new Rails application. Okay, so you just need to run Rails new and then developer community or dev hyphen community. Dev hyphen community. Okay, and I'm using one more thing here that is I'm using the PostgreSQL as the default database. So what I can do here hyphen D equal to PostgreSQL. Okay, so what this will do that this will generate a new Rails application with database adapter is Postgres SQL. Okay, so run this command and when you run this command, you can see that this is now your Rails app is being generated. Okay, and once your app has been generated, you need to switch into your Rails app directory. Okay, and uh, then we need to open it in some sublime or your preferred text editor. Okay, so now switch into the project directory. So dev community and now open it in sublime okay however you can choose any of your uh, preferred text editor like vs code and all that okay now uh, as the next thing open the gem file and we will add few gems in it okay so open the gem file okay and here we will add some gems like let's say faker range device kaminari and so on okay however I just wanted to tell you that we will not use these gems in this lecture, but we will work them in coming lectures, but I'm adding them in advance in my project or in our project. Okay, so let's add the faker gem first. So what you can do here, gem faker. Okay, this gem is used to generate dummy data and we will use this to generate dummy records to populate our database and to play around. Okay, and then we need to add gem rensec. So add gem. Gem Rensec. Okay, this gem is used to provide search functionality in your application. And after adding the Rensec, what you need to do? Add Gem Device. Okay, I hope you have idea about the device gem that we need to use device gem for authentication purpose. Okay, and we will use in our project to uh, authenticate users and manage their sessions. Okay, and then you need to add Gem Kaminari. Okay, Kaminari is a gem which is used for the pagination purpose. Okay, so we can uh, add pagination if we have long list of data or long list of objects on browser, then we can add pagination in the backend and then we can provide a uh, limited functionality per page for the records to be listed on. Okay, and then we need to add gem CSS bundling. CSS bundling rails. Okay, this gem is used to add a style framework in your application and we will use bootstrap for our project. Okay, and that's it. Now save the gem file and switch to the terminal and run bundle install. Sorry, bundle install. Okay, and once the bundle has been installed, let's create a new home controller for your project and set a custom route for it. Okay, we can use Rails generator for adding this custom controller. However, if you want to create this manually, you can do this as well. Okay, but here I'm using the Rails generator command to create my controller. Okay, so what we can do here Rails G controller home and index okay so what this command will do that is it will first create a controller with home name okay so here you can see that rails g controller home so first argument is the home which is the controller name and after the first argument everything will be considered as the action name inside that particular controller if you are trying to generate your controller with the rails generator okay now run this command and this will instantly create a new controller for your rails application okay and then what we need to do that switch to the routes file okay and you can find the routes file inside the config routes.rb okay so switch to the project directory and go to the routes file so open config routes.rb okay and here you can see get slash index okay 
it means we have a route generated for get request and when this request will come to the server it will load the index action of the home controller but this is not the root path we need to make it as root path route okay so what we need to do to make it root path so we just need to change it to let's say root and then replace this slash by hash okay and now it becomes the root path for your application and delete all these commented lines okay so now whenever your application will start at localhost 3000 it will be open at the home controllers index action okay and that's it but still we are not able to run this project because we used postgres as the database adapter for our project and we need to do some configuration into database yml okay so open your database.yml and you can find your database.yml into the uh, config directory okay and here you can see that we used postgres sql database okay and now what we need to do that we need to set the host and port and the username and password into our database uh, yml okay so what we can do here we can just use let's say host let's say local host okay and then you need to use a uh, username and password a uh, first aid port so port is 5432 make sure whenever you use postgres database sql adapter you need to add 5432 as port okay and then you need to use your postgres username okay so in my case it is lenovo super so i will i am using this okay uh, sorry uh, make this change okay and now you need to provide password okay so this is uh, my local database configuration okay and you must check according to your database configuration okay and if you are using postgres then it is your responsibility to provide your username and password and if you do not know how to use that you can simply use postgres and postgres as both username and password else you can switch to the psql console and create a super user for yourself or create a new role with super user for yourself and then use as a username and choose the password here okay so save the database yml file and switch to the terminal okay and now what we need to do we need to run the command to rails db create okay because here you can see that it is showing development as database dev community development and in the test environment you can see dev community test okay so whenever we run rails db create it will create a database for us in the development environment with name dev community development and for test it will you uh, create database with dev community test name okay and if you wish you can remove all these commented lines from the database yml because these are just instructions and we set up it so we don't need that okay but however if you want to keep them you can keep it but i am removing because i don't need that and i'm using the production settings as well okay so now you can see that this is my database yml and here i have set the default okay and i'm using default in both development and test okay and just make sure that these four are the mandatory requirements and you need to make sure that okay and if you are using this system on mac system or if you are uh, configuring this database yml on the mac system then make sure that your username is always your database a uh, postgres username okay so save the database yml now and switch to the terminal and here you need to run rails db create okay and when you run this command you can see that the database dev community development and dev community test has been created okay however if you want to uh, do not do this of effort then what you can do you can simply avoid uh, creating the database using the postgres sql option here you can see that as we use inside initially so you can skip that part okay if you want to use the default sql database configuration uh, because it might be possible that you do not have the postgres sql install in the in your machine so you can use that but i would like to recommend you to use this because uh, uh, in this project we will work on so many sql queries and that requires some postgres and you cannot perform that on sqlite so that's why i'm using the uh, postgres database adapter here okay so anyway after running the rails db create command you need to run the Rails server and open your application in the browser okay so run the Rails server 
rails s or rails server you can write complete command as well so you can use rails s or you can use rails server okay and when you run this command you can see that your uh, server is started now what you need to do you just need to go to the browser and open your rails application in a new tab with localhost colon 3000 as a port so switch to the browser and here you just need to run localhost colon 3000 okay and here you can see that this is the content content of index.html.trv within the home controllers index section okay and you can see this in the sublime or in your project directory as well so open the project directory and go to the app views okay and here you can see that this is the home controller that we generated using the rails generator and this is your index template okay and now if you want to uh, change the content of it you can write here like let's say hello welcome to the developers community okay and you can save this and when you refresh your browser you will see the reflected content on the browser okay and that's it so in this lecture we just created a new rails application add some gems in it for using upcoming lectures set up the route file and also learn how we can configure our database yml if we are using any other database adapter rather than using sqlite which is the default one provided by the rails okay now in the next lecture we will use css bundling gem to add bootstrap in our rails application and we will also add header and footer in our application meanwhile try this lecture at your end and we will meet into next lecture till then tata goodbye take care and stay safe